In this new section, we're going to learn about middleware pipeline. And in this first video lesson, we're going to talk about middleware pipeline theory. So let's first of all take a look at the diagram that we have used in previous lectures right here. So we have browser, and then we have our web server. The browser sends HTTP request, and the web server returns back the HTTP response. And inside the web server, we have two major components. We have the Castro server, which is used as the HTTP server. It's part of our application, but uh, the actual application application is the second part here. So the HTTP server listens to the request and translate that into a C sharp object, which is HTTP context object. And then the context object is then sent to the actual web application. The actual web application is fundamentally running on a middleware pipeline, which consists of many middleware components. And once this context object goes through the middleware pipeline, it comes out still as a HTTP context, but now it contains the full response. The Castro server is then forwards that HTTP response for the browser to display. Now, why do we need middleware pipeline? Let's think from the other angle. If we don't have the middleware pipeline, what it means is that we are going to have everything coupled together. All of the functionalities that a web application will need to perform has to be coupled together into one single component. So what are those functionalities? We have talked about that in the second lesson where we have routing authentication authorization, model binding, model validation, and one of these endpoint handling technologies and, and producing results. So all of them plus your custom codes. Well, your main custom codes will be hooked inside one of this, but if you have additional logic that needs to be processed as a cross-cutting concern, then it's going to act as one of these. So all of them will be executed inside one component if we don't have an architecture to help us to process these functionalities separately. So in order to come up with a proper architecture, ASP.NET Core comes up with a middleware pipeline, right, which follows like a pipeline design pattern where we have the HTTP context object goes through the middleware components in order to decouple those functionalities. So this is the general picture. Let's take a look in details what a middleware pipeline really is. Scroll down, I have already drawn this picture. Okay, so now this middleware pipeline becomes sideways and it really reflects how middleware pipeline works. So this itself is a middleware pipeline. You can see that I say web application, that's because web application is based on fundamentally so the HTTP context objects is fed to the first middleware in the middleware pipeline. The first middleware process the request, and then it modifies the context object. It forwards that context to the second middle. The second middleware process some other functionalities, and it does the same thing. It modifies the HTTP context object. And then it goes through many other possible middlewares, dotted line, to indicate that there could be the last middleware and after that, you can see that it doesn't actually directly forward the text object back to the Castro server from the last component. It returns back to the previous component. And then HTTP context is then forward to the previous component all the way to the first one. We'll then forward that context object back to Castro server. The Castro server will extract the HTTP response, forward that back to the browser. Now, you already know why we have this middleware pipeline pattern. A middleware pipeline consists of one or many different middleware components, which is being shown here. And each middleware component takes care of usually one single functionality. And that follows the single responsibility principle so that all of the functionalities are decoupled with each other. And it's good for scalability and maintainability. So what you need to pay attention here is the fact that the context object here is being forward from one middleware to the next, to the next, and then it actually returns all the way to the browser. And how is this our next topic? So how is this implemented? This is all boils down 
two function calls. So let's say we have function one, right? And then passing the context object. And after that, it has its body. Let's turn this around. So the bracket here represents the body of the function, which is the body of the function one. And then in order to trigger the next middleware component, it calls function two of middleware component two. So basically, function one calls function two, and then calls function three, four, all the way to, let's say, function x is the last one. Now, when the last function returns, it returns back to the previous function and then all the way to function two. Now, when function two returns, of course, it returns to its caller, which is function one. So this is how the middleware pipeline works. It basically works as a series of function calls. Right? Function one calls function two calls function three all the way to the last function. And then when the last function returns, it returns back to the previous one, to the previous one, to the previous one, and then to the first one. And that return value is forward cast to server here. So that's how the middleware pipeline is implemented. It implements as function calls. Because it implements as function calls, you can see that these functions can be called regularly from one to the next one to the next one. But if one of them decides to say, I don't want to call the next one, right? For example, function two doesn't want to call function three anymore then it directly just returns back. And this behavior is called short circuiting. And this behavior is called short circuiting. And the reason why it's called short circuiting is obviously without the short circuiting, next middleware be called. And, and the middleware components in the entire pipeline should be triggered one by one. Here, function two short circuits the entire pipeline so that it ends early. Everything return back from function two to function one to Castro server. That's why this behavior is called short circuiting. And the middleware here, middleware number two, is called a short circuiting middleware. And most of the time is actually called the terminal middleware because this one terminates forwarding off. Okay, so you have two types of middleware, regular middleware, and a terminal short circuits the entire pipeline. And that's basically everything I want to cover in this video. Right? We talked about why we have the middleware pipeline, because without it, everything will be coupled together. With it, we can effectively separate the functionality and decouples them. And each middleware component performs its own responsibility and the entire architecture follows the single responsibility principle. And how the middleware pipeline is implemented is implemented as function calls. So one function call, another one call, another one, and then when it returns, it's back to the previous one, to the previous one, all the way to the first one. Last but not least, we have a short circuiting behavior here. So one of these functions, which means one of the middleware, can decide to short circuit everything returns from that middleware. And we call that middleware the terminal middleware. And that's everything I want to cover in this video. If any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you in the next one.